This is the only music production template you'll ever need for Pro Tools, and it's something I've been curating for years. And it's here to ignite your creativity on the production side, to give your sessions a clean and professional edge, and to help you experience Pro Tools in a whole new way as a production suite. So let's dive in and explore how it all comes together. Today I'm gonna to show you everything about my personal music production template in Pro Tools. And I am using the latest version 2025.6. And this is actually the same file that I've been using and tweaking since 2005 throughout the many evolutions of Pro Tools. And this has been the canvas behind everything that I've produced in my entire career. And this template is built around reimagining Pro Tools as a production suite. We have some new features in Pro Tools, the biggest one being the new integration with Splice. And I do have a separate video talking about that integration, but I just wanted to share this template with you guys and showcase how to actually utilize it and how this can really maximize your experience in Pro Tools, especially on the production side. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So we have my template pulled up here and the basis behind this template is to offer not only a faster and more optimized workflow, but also to give yourself as a producer more control over your session, the ultimate control actually. And I'm gonna define what that means, but to all of you who are not Pro Tools users, uh, don't be overwhelmed by this. I'm gonna describe this in a way that you can also understand this and probably apply this to whatever DAW that you use as well. But this is more geared toward Pro Tools users. And I truly want you guys to just get a good basis and understanding of how you can use this um, for your betterment as well. So at the very top, man, we have my producer tag. We have VSTs, MIDI tracks, elements, a click track, my beat sub master, uh, which is also an auxiliary track. But it's a sub master. And then that runs out through the master channel as well. So what we're looking at is basically a series of folders that consists of all of the essentials that I need every time I open my session up. And so this enables me to produce a record from beginning to end, man, from the production side to the mixing and mastering, also the sequencing. And it also leaves room to have a little bit more professionalism when I'm sending out these sessions to engineers. It's all organized. It really helps keep the integrity of the music. All right, so let's dive in a little bit further and let's open up these folders, man. I have my tag, of course, VSTs, MIDIs, elements and the rest you can see and so under my tag we have my producer tag right at the front let's listen to it J -Kids. J -Kids. J -Kids. and i'm able to move that around i can drag and drop other tags here whatever i need to do is just very convenient i also have my true verb and some uh, delay with the delay locked into the tempo i can change that around if i need to as well J -Kids. J -Kids. J -Kids. You know to something faster just depending on what the tempo is next we have my vst folder where i have all of my virtual instruments set onto audio tracks but i'm going to get into why i prefer to use stereo audio tracks as my placeholders for my virtual instruments rather than using instrument tracks not to say that instrument tracks are bad again it's just my preference so we'll dive into that a little bit later next underneath we have my midi tracks where they're all routed of course to my virtual instruments up top and then next we have my elements we have a drums bus, music bus, ear candy bus, Vox, sound effects, and even a sample bus from when I'm sampling records or whatever I'm doing. But these are all just a way to have clean passes for groups of elements within my beat. And we'll dive into that a little bit further as well. Underneath that, we have six sub auxiliary tracks. So of course, bus tracks. Again, we'll go a little bit further as we go along. A click track and my beat sub master channel here where all of my element auxiliaries or element bus tracks are routed through. So all of my sound will come through here. I can mute the entire beat. Once I have some vocals laid, if I need to bounce an acapella, just very convenient. Now, speaking of vocals, let's open up these hidden tracks on the left side. We'll make those active. So these tracks and folders, again, are designated for recording vocals. So oftentimes I'm working with a top liner or songwriter in the room. And if they get an idea, I instantaneously have tracks ready to go and available for them to record their leads, their backgrounds or stacks of vocals, as you can see, as well as, you know, the reverb and delay already kind of there to, you know, send to the leads or the backs if I need to. And all of those tracks as well run through the vocal submaster. So then I can mute all of the vocals if I need to bounce an instrumental. So again, I have total control over my session 
And to mention, this vocal setup is just a basic setup that enables me to record what I need vocally. I can always translate that into a bigger vocal session or whatever I need to do, but it's there as a convenience once again. So let's get back to the production side. We'll hire to make these inactive. So right underneath my tag, I have my VST uh, folder section where I have all of my virtual instruments kind of already preset there. And again, these are all stereo audio tracks because you know that's just my preference. I prefer instead of using instrument tracks to control my virtual instruments using MIDI. So I have a number of different options for myself, you know, and I can rename these tracks if I need to, if I ever change the uh, virtual instrument. And let's open up this contact here. And so what I like to do is set up these first five or six uh, VST tracks for my drum programming. And I use contact for that. So we have it set up, as you can see on these first uh, six VST tracks. So right underneath, I have my MIDI tracks already pre-routed. I can also change the name. I can change where it's routed to, uh, etc. And all I have to do is just pick the channel that I want to control, of course. So we'll select contact one, channel one. And let's go ahead and trigger that We can audition it. You see the sound coming through my contact one VST track, which is running out of the drum bus element track here, which is also routed through the B sub master. And so I'm able to mute the drums, right? I can mute the actual VST track here. I can mute the drum bus track, or I can mute the beat sub master. And so everything is set up to have control on both a micro and a macro level. That means not only muting things, but also automating things. If I wanna automate some things on the actual VST track, I can. If I wanna automate it on the entire drums that's happening, I can. If I wanna do the entire beat, I can do that also. And this all rings true for every other virtual instrument that you see up here, as well as every other MIDI track that you can control. You can do all of that in there just like that. So we just lay this down just like that. Now, what about the musical elements? The same thing. We have Keyscape pulled up here. We're already routed through Keyscape on the MIDI track. So let's control that for a second. We can see that it's coming through not only the VST track here or the virtual instrument track. It's also coming through the music bus and the beat sub master as well. So I can mute, mute, mute. So again, it's almost like three different levels of control when it comes to your elements. And whether it's myth or not, I've always believed that I've gotten cleaner mixes and better uh, quality music from just having clean passes, man, everything kind of separated like this really goes a long way in terms of uh, the sound quality. And if we want to simply change one of these virtual instruments, let's just open up the DX7. Let's just swap that out for the CZ, just like that. If I wanted to change the name, I can go Arteria 2, I can go CZ, just like that. Now we pull it up on our MIDI track. We just find Arteria CZ, go to channel one and control it. So let's go back down to our element section where we see the sub bus one through six. And these are again, auxiliary tracks or bus tracks and how we can use these, right? What these are designated for. And so let's pretend we recorded some symbols over our drums. So let's bring these up real quick to our drums and let's import a couple of like crash symbols. And so we have some crash symbols already imported, as you can see. Now let's just kind of drag these over. Let's pretend we have a song going on and we're sequencing these out at different places where we want these to perform. And I already have these three routed out through the drums bus because they are part of the drums family. So um, that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Let's just say we want to put some reverb on these crash symbols to give it a little bit more room effect. Let's pull up the true verb. And... There we have it. We have true verb on all three. Still nothing wrong with that. It's not overloading my computer. Everything's still good to go, right? Well, for me, I love using these sub buses as my binding agent to grouping smaller groups of sounds. And so instead, I would have it look more so like this. Taking off both of those true verbs and let's just drag it down to sub bus one. We'll route this to sub bus one here. We'll rename that to symbols. And then we'll route this out to the drums bus. Now, 
all three. So now I'm able to control all three of them simultaneously with the effects, with panning and volume, um, or I can do it individually. It just gives me an extra step in controlling certain parts of my, my music. And so again, I have these symbols here and I can also group other things. I could use symbols. I could do things like claps and hand claps and things of that nature or percussion instruments. And it just gives you that extra grouping, um, that layer of grouping uh, throughout your music. You can also do it for music if you have, you know, groups of strings or whatever it is. It just gives you that autonomy to be able to control so much within your session um, on the production side. So that's pretty much the basics of my template on a blank canvas. I'm going to open up a track real quick just to show you guys a little bit more on how to utilize it. All right, so we have a full track open. Let's just take a listen real quick. J Kids, J Kids, J Kids. So again, I have my tag up top. I have my VST folder right here. I have my MIDI tracks, which is inactive. And all of my elements, as you can see, are, you know, I have everything kind of grouped neatly. And so this just gives me a clean way to look at my session. The best thing about sending my sessions out to engineers is that they know how to read everything. And so again, with my elements, you can see all of my drums going through the drum bus. You can see all of my musical elements here going through the music bus and all of my ear candy stuff going through ear candy. And so again, that goes through the beat sub master, which again goes through the master channel down below. And it's just an easy read for my engineers. And again, it just maintains the integrity of the music so that none of the quality is lost along the way. And so let's really go under the hood and how a track like this really comes together under my template. So let's listen. I can mute things like the drums. Just music. Let's bring it back. Let's mute the music real quick. Ear candy. So now we just have the drums. I can mute the crashes which are a sub bus element for the crashes within the drums. So let's listen again. And usually when I'm completely done with the track, I'll take this MIDI and convert it to audio so that then I can send out the session to the engineers or whoever will be mixing it. Um, but since it's on my system, I like to just kind of keep the MIDI open um, just in case I need to lay something else down. You know, on these tracks, I can still go up to my VSTs, my virtual instruments, and I can still change out the um, virtual instrument if I need to. Uh, it's very convenient, like I said, man, to having everything in front of me that I need uh, to produce a record. So again, I'll take this MIDI and commit them fully to audio uh, once I'm completely done with the track. And so this is pretty much what a finished product looks like in my sessions, um, really organized. Everything is named, color coded. The tracks are color coded as well so that you know what you're looking at. Just an easy read for everybody. And let's just say we're ready to record some vocals. I can open this up just like I showed you earlier. And now we have tracks ready to go for some vocals. And again, once I have vocals here, I'm able to mute the entire vocals uh, to create the instrumental or I can mute the entire track to create the acapella and leave the vocals open. So again, ultimate control over your entire session from beginning to end. Now, lastly, let me show you what my template looks like once you purchase it from my website. All right, so another blank canvas here, and this is just what it looks like as soon as you download it. Um, again, it's the same thing that I have, except it's pretty much no man's land. There's no effects, no virtual instruments preloaded. Of course, you would wanna set this up to however you would want it to be for yourself. So again, same concept, producer tag, virtual instrument section. Um, let's slide that back over, there we go. Have our MIDI tracks. Of course, we have our elements, we have our sub buses, click, beat master, beat sub master, excuse me. And right below, we have our vocals as well, which are still inactive. So it's all there. And again, another thing that I have is comments to help you guys, some tutor comments uh, by each of these tracks, just kind of detailing its utilization and setting it up yourself. You know, you can do little things like going ahead and dragging in your producer tags, things like that, you know, going ahead and 
you know, setting up some of your virtual instruments. Like I have contact here. Let's just drag that in right here. Easy money. You know, whatever you want to put in, let's drop in Serum. And then we can rename it into Serum just like that. And we can preload or pre-set up our virtual instruments, as you can see, just like that. And let's go ahead and control it. And also remember to route your virtual instruments to the designated elements area, or you can simply route it all through the Beat Submaster if that's your liking. Um, but for me, this is just the cleaner way to do it. You know, I would take Serum and route that out through the Musics bus, as you can see. So rename this into Serum. Let's go to Serum MIDI. Now it's out through the Music bus. You know, if you do use the elements, again, just drag this MIDI track down to the Music bus just so that you can see where things belong, color coding, all of these elements, all of those steps in the process really helps to make things a lot more professional and it goes a long way. I also wanna mention that I've included some of my custom presets, like my shortcuts, the actions that I use uh, more often, like you know, quantizing, zooming, nudging, copying, pasting, you name it. It's all right here kind of laid out. It gives you a way to uh, kind of work a little bit faster, should improve your workflow as well. I've also included my custom UI theme as well. So this coloring that you see, I customized this color scheme because it's very comfortable on my eyes since I'm looking at Pro Tools all day. And of course you can use the factory defaults, which is you know a little bit darker, whatever else they have. But for me, this one is my favorite uh, touch on the UI theme. And lastly, I do have a short video showing you how to install everything on your computer. And so if you're interested, go to jkidsmusic.com and it's all there. Check it out. Um, I hope this video was helpful along you guys' journey in production and Pro Tools. Like this video, man. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment for your boy. And I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Peace.